the largest check that I ever wrote in my entire life to get an apartment here. After one month, they were me living at this motel six. I had to live on the floor uh, for three months uh, in that apartment with no furniture as I began my teaching career, my professional life. So I just want that to be on the record because 50% of the junior college, which is an institution we love in this, uh, in this county, uh, the faculty is turning over as, as they retire. Uh, so to recruit young professionals like myself, this is going to be an ongoing issue about rent stabilization and affordable housing. I want to speak, I spoke about my issue, but my students face a much worse situation. Uh, I have worked with uh, students that are at risk. I work with Latino students. I work with African American students in both the Emotion Learning Community and the Hispanic Serving Institute. These are wonderful, bright, young students. We need them in our community. We need to them to stay in our community. As they graduate from the college, we need their energy. We need their bright minds. And we need uh, people whose parents, these are, these, are, these are the kids of parents that work in the fields. These are the kids that work in our service industry that are the most exploited workers and the most low income workers in our county. But they have carved out of that oppression a monumental dignity. And we need students like that that come from those families, those dignified families, to fight against the world of people that are poisoned with greed. And I need my students and I love my students. But they need housing, right? They cannot afford to live in these communities. They cannot, they're, they're being uh, choked in their development because they're not able to move out of their houses. And let me speak to the parents in the room. Don't you want your kids to move out at some point so you can have a little bit of space to, your, to yourself? <laughs> there we go. So uh, this, I, I urge you to, to take on rent stabilization and affordability and until, the, until time you can do that, a moratorium and please put a, a living wage together with all these things because they all work together. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hale. After Lee Turner and after... Hello, my name is Michael Hale. I'm a professor at Santa Rosa Junior College. Um, I'd like to share with you that the most exciting day is when I got the, when I received the notification that I had a job at Santa Rosa Junior College right after receiving my PhD. I moved here with my family and I had to live in a motel for the first month because there was less than a 2% vacancy in this entire town. It was the largest check in my entire life uh, to get an to get an apartment, a two-bedroom apartment in this community. So while I was embarking on my professional career, I was very excited uh, to become the, the, a new full-time professor in this institution that is so revered in the county. Um, I had to sleep on the floor for the first three months uh, because I couldn't afford any furniture. So not only did I stay in the motel for the first month, but three months after that when I re finally received my apartment I had to sleep on the floor. Um, and if it, it was, and you know, as it's bad for me, it is e even worse for my students. And I, and I support my students so much. I love my students. Um, they are the, the bright minds. They are the future of this county. We need their energy. We need their enthusiasm. But they can't stay here if they can't ha find housing. How can we recruit young professionals? How can we, we, we promise all the training uh, in this college, this wonderful institution of learning. We have nurses, we have people that are training to be firefighters, we have people that be training in all these wonderful services, but they don't make a wage that can equal the, an affordable house within this county. We need to work on affordable housing, we need to work on rent stabilization, and we need to work on a, a living wage for this county. Uh, um, we have over 70 affiliates and over 60,000 workers and their families who are um, employees. I am um, here and it's great to be reassured that the priorities that you have are going to continue, that you listed are going to continue to be priorities. But let's be honest, there's um, obviously going to be people against rent stabilization. Let's, let's deal with uh, the real agenda of a lot of groups that, be it real estate or be it chamber or be it the alliance who represent employers and owners, they are going to fight hard against um, allowing working people to have a fair wage and to have um, affordable housing. As Jack Rockford has said, the best way to make housing affordable is to raise wages. There's more affordable housing if more people are being paid decent wages. So all the groups, I hope, the business groups and the Chamber of the Alliance, they constantly bring their hands and want to build their way out of um, the housing issue should maybe instead look at paying good wages and benefits to workers and increasing the ability of people to afford good housing. Um, we can't build our way out of this crisis. It's going to take more than just one fix. But I also hope that the city council is aware that part of the energy here 
is that people are concerned that a lack of political will and intimidation by business groups and real estate interests are going to stop you, the city council, from doing what you are supposed to do and what almost everybody in the city agrees we need. And that is speak up on behalf of the working class, the people who elected you, and not on behalf of the interests, the owners, and the people who are raising our rents astronomically. So please keep that in mind. Find and keep the political will you all told us you had when you were campaigning. And please keep fighting for working people. Thank you.